Tonight's top European Union stories from the Unit UK include EU ETS stop the clock, scope extended till 2016. Spanish football clubs accused of breaching rules. EU calls for increased Arctic protection sanctuary around the North Pole. Legislation for small agricultural holdings plus rethinking British attacks on EU red tape. It's Wednesday, 26th of March. I'm Rick Timmis and this is the Unit Nightly News. First up, the hot story from our website, theunituk.com. EU ETS stopped the clock, scope extended till 2016. The European governing institutions have hammered out a compromise deal to prolong the stop the clock provision on the European Union's Emissions Trading System, or ETS, for aviation to cover only flights operated within the European Economic Area until the end of 2016. This will ease international opposition to the system and give the International Civil Aviation Organization time to devise a global mechanism to curb aviation emissions. But Europe's airlines are not ecstatic about the deal, which for now is still informal, asserting that limiting the European Union ETS to intra-European flights results in competitive distortions. They also question why they have to pay for offsetting their emissions, thereby enriching government's treasuries, while the same governments are blocking the implementation of the single European sky, which could save up to 18 million metric tonnes of carbon dioxide emissions per year. Now, to complement this article, we also have coverage and comment on the European Single Skies project on the front page of our website, theuniuk.com. Spanish clubs accused of breaching rules. The European Union have made formal accusations against seven Spanish clubs with claims that they have breached competition rules. Real Madrid, Barcelona, Atletico Bilbao, Asasuna, Valencia, Elche and Hercules are all to be investigated after they were accused to have received state aid which is in breach of the rules. Now, the Illegal State Aid Directive is a favourite of mine, and it's something that has a deep and long-term effect on taxpayers in member states. The State Aid Directive is designed to limit the involvement of member state governments. Now, one argument is that this operates to support the free market and helps ensure a balanced and competitive commercial sector. However, a counter-argument would be that this limits the ability of member state governments to control their economies and restricts them from utilising tax contributions to promote projects that provide unilaterally required services and deliver an investment return. Two examples of where this has been the case are the Royal Bank of Scotland and the Post Office. Now, the Royal Mail is another victim of the state aid legislation and, as usual, being sold off below market value, something that we believe here at the unit wasn't deliberate and not accidental. Finally, we have the Hinkley C Reactor. Now, this is set to cost £16 billion to build, but it will sell its output to the national grid at double the current cost. And during the life of the project, it will generate £77 billion in revenues. This return will be reaped by its French and Chinese investors. So when the EU starts slapping a Spanish football club under illegal state aid legislation, well, really, it's a bit of a laugh. Not quite so funny when it's being used to strip the assets of a nation and pickpocket the wallets of the taxpaying public. The EU calls for increased Arctic protection, a sanctuary around the North Pole. The European Union Parliament has passed a resolution that calls for increased protection in the high Arctic from development activities. It also calls for a network of Arctic conservation areas and protection of the international sea area around the North Pole beyond the economic zones of Arctic nations. The resolution calls on the European Commission, the EU's external action service, and EU governments to take measures to protect the Arctic from damage from commercial exploitation. 
The EU action takes discussions of development in the far north in a different direction than that of Arctic Council members Norway, Denmark, Canada and Russia, which have resisted calls for a permanent halt to development of the Arctic. The US as well is interested in Arctic development, as are other countries such as China and Japan, which are global fishing nations. Now, as the EU looks to legislate on this, you can be assured that it is set to increase the tensions between Europe and Russia. Again, it looks as though the hidden agenda here is that of energy production and control. Take a look at this pipeline map of the Ukraine, and you start to get a feel for how and why the Ukraine is of such strategic and economic importance to both the EU and Russia. Now, this move to block resource exploitation in the Arctic will only serve to poke at the Great Bear with another pointy stick. Now, the EU, and indeed more to the point the UK, is missing a massive opportunity, that of nuclear fusion. Now, we featured a TED Talk in our video library, Britain Leading Fusion Energy, which was presented by physicist Stephen Cowley. We already have successful small scale energy production happening at the Jet Taurus in Cambridge. We are close. Now notice in the film how Stephen says, I love it when Mr. Putin turns the gas tap off because my budget goes up. What stands in the way of successful fusion energy is money. Now it's not a linear curve, so it's going to cost a lot of money. But when you consider that the UK households spend £26 billion every year on energy, it's a very worthwhile investment that the UK could and should undertake. Of course, we can't undertake such a project whilst we are restricted from doing so under the European Union State Aid Directive. An initiative for small agricultural holdings. This report on the future of small agricultural holdings states, Member states often create unnecessary red tape and small holders may not have the necessary resources and experience to follow the relevant administrative processes effectively. The common agricultural policy tends disproportionately to benefit larger farms for the structure of its support is principally based on surface area and past production levels and is therefore unable to respond suitably to the situation and function of small agricultural holdings. Smallholders may have difficulties in accessing EU programme funding due to their inability to meet the capital and or capacity requirements for eligibility. Therefore, a broader approach is needed. The Member States and the Commission are called upon to take appropriate action under the new Common Agricultural Policy and draw up guidelines for the period beyond 2020 in which greater attention is paid to the specific needs of small family holdings. Well, this is a straightforward initiative that is required reading if you own a small amount of land that you wish to use for any kind of agricultural production. It is likely that directives and law may be amended or drafted to support this initiative and, of course, our research team will keep a watching brief and will report back to you here on this channel. Rethinking British Attacks on EU Red Tape In the last 15 months since David Cameron's speech on Europe, the issue of EU Red Tape, that is EU rules imposing unnecessary costs on businesses, has featured prominently on political and media agendas. Initiatives such as the Cut EU Red Tape report by the Business Task Force in October 2013 and the ongoing balance of competence exercise have helped propagate two ideas. First, that EU regulation are almost inherently wasteful and second, that the British government is fighting the good fight to do away with red tape. And this echoes earlier British campaigns for deregulation at EU level in the 1990s and in the early 2000s. Interestingly, while other Conservatives decry red tape, London's Mayor Boris Johnson recently made the case that the Brits are not the bad boys of Europe, other countries such as France are. He puts forward another criticism. Too few member states implement EU legislation correctly. This undermines the single market and creates unfair competition for businesses operating in law-abiding member states such as the UK. Well... I think that we have shown time and time again here at the unit that all of this rhetoric has in fact had 
no impact on EU regulation and law. In fact, the EU, as its leading commissioners admit, simply ignore the decrying of legislation from Britain. The problem is, of course, hidden from view, as set out by Foreign and Commonwealth Office Document 301048. Our politicians from all parties are obligated to hide from view the works of the EU, taking responsibility for all manner of regulations themselves. Now, this is an excellent article on the front page of our website right now and well worth taking the time to read. So, remember, visit our website, theunituk.com, for all the very latest news. You can find our page on Facebook by searching for The Unit UK, or one word. Join our community on Google+, Plus, where you can interact with us, voice your opinions, and post comments about our stories, and even get involved in the shows. For all the latest tweets as they happen, then follow us on Twitter, at The E Unit. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. I'm Rick Timmis, reporting for The Unit, Nightly News. I'll see you soon.